Hey everyone, this is Andrew Hess and this is my SharePoint questions. And today I have a video from a question that I got on YouTube. So before we get into it, I just want to say if you guys have questions, you know, just send it to me through YouTube or you can send it to my email. My email is in my description of my YouTube. And just ask me and I'll see if I can, uh, you know, create what you're looking for and kind of help you solve your problem and give you some ideas. Uh, today, what we're going to get into is a question I had, and the question is, if we have one SharePoint list, and it is has uh, choice fields in a column, and they're delimited, they said by co comma or semicolon, well, I did comma, so I have one SharePoint list, right, and it has delimited fields here on the choices column, and both of these are just single line text. He did say multi-line text, but single line text I believe can be up to 255 characters and that's plenty right like we don't need more than that so we have our choices in this column here we have another list and it has title and choice answers and what we want to do is we want to populate a drop down in power apps and we want to populate that based on um, based on our choice our choices here let me show you a couple ways to do that all right so for this uh, demonstration, the first thing you're wanting to do is connect to both of those lists. So I've connected to both those lists here. I've connected to list one, list two, that is what I named them. So we have uh, list one here. It has our choices with the title field, so colors, numbers, cities, states. And then we have list two, which is what we're gonna populate uh, based off the other SharePoint list. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a gallery and this gallery is going to use list one All right so we have a few choices here we have four choices to be exact and then I'm going to create a new screen another new screen so we have uh, one screen and two screens so on the second screen what we're going to do is we're going to create a Label, we'll just do a label and then a drop down. On the first screen, what we're going to do is when we select something, we want to highlight it and change the color. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the template fill, template fill, and I'm going to say if this item dot is selected. Then we want uh, this color, else we want this color. And I'm just going to, you know, put in some numbers here. So, all right. So I changed the template fill. Now, when we select something, it's going to change the colors, right? So now, what I want to do is when we select something, You can add a button here, you can add an icon, you can do whatever you want. So if we went in here and we uh, added a, about a, just a button to make it simple. And we'll just set, call it uh, select. All right, so we added a button and this button is just called select. So if we press play, we select, it changes the color for us. That's what it does right now. What we want to do so we want to set a variable and the reason I'm using set variable is because it's going to be on multiple screens now I could use a context variable and pass that variable through uh, navigate but for this example I'm just going to say variable choices and we're going to set it as this item dot choices so let's look at what this item dot choices is so if you see right here this item dot choices is our selection so that's going to be our blue, green, red, yellow, our numbers, our cities, and our states. So the next thing we want to do is we want to navigate to screen two. I'm just going to fade it. All right, so we've set a variable. We're going to select, we're going to set a variable, and we're going to navigate. So I select, and now I'm on this screen. All right, so let's break down the variable. So right now we have a label. The label, we're going to name it variable choices. So we can see that no matter what we select, let's, let's create a back button too. When we go back,
we go back, we select numbers. You can see it's the numbers. We go back, we select cities, cities. All right, now, so we want to split this uh, text value up into the drop-down solution. So it's really simple. So we'll just do split the variable choices with the delimiter, delimiter, which is a comma. And look, we're already done. So if we go back, we select states. Our drop-down value is based on whatever we selected. Our colors, our drop-down value is based on whatever we're selected. All right, so we, we did it there. Now let's do it in a, in a form. Let's do it in an out-of-the-box form. So I'm gonna connect it to my list two. Now we have our out-of-the-box fields. I'm gonna remove the attachments. I'm gonna remove that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the form, and I've done this before, so I'm gonna go to fields, choice answers, and I'm gonna change it to allowed values, all right? So choice answers is now going to be allowed values. We give it a little bit more space. So I'm gonna unlock the choice answers, and I'm just gonna change it to split variable choices by the delimiter of a comma. Now it doesn't like that uh, the update value, so what we gotta do is we gotta say is selected dot result. So we remove that red. I'm gonna delete all this. We have our simple form here. We're gonna create another button that's going to be submit. So this is just gonna be submit. And on the selection, when we select it, we're just going to submit form. And this is form two for me. All right, so let's say, let's go back. Our back button doesn't work right now. Let me uh, change, I'm gonna change this to navigate screen one fade. All right, so let's go back. We'll, we'll choose numbers. It's populated with numbers. These are my these are my numbers. We're gonna submit. We're gonna go to list two. Refresh. These are my numbers, choice answers three. Let's do a different one. Let's go back. Let's choose colors. These are my colors. We'll choose red, submit. Refresh, these are my colors. So another thing we wanted to do is instead of uh, just navigating, we wanna make sure we do new form also. New form, form two. So now let's go back to it. This is just gonna clear our form answers. So we'll click on cities. It'll be a new form. <clears throat> we can choose our cities, my cities, submit. When we submit, maybe we want to navigate back to form one, or screen one actually, I mean, with a fade. So we click on states, we click a state, more states, submit, brings us back. We can check out SharePoint, more states is now in there. So we have now populated that dropdown based on which, whatever our selection is. So we can add a new one. Let's, let's add a new, um, a new uh, delimited. Let's, let's try a new one on SharePoint. We could do this on the Power App side. We can do this on the SharePoint side. Um, so let's do type, I guess, and then our choices will be, you know, line, dashed, dotted, blank. So we have um, four different choices. We can go back to uh, Power Apps and we're gonna refresh it. And we could create a refresh button if we wanted. We now have a new option. Let's make a little bit more space for it. I'm gonna remove this picture. All right, we now have a new option. We have type uh, uh, a line dash dotted blank. So when we select it, that is now populated our drop down choices. So let's uh, let's let's keep going. I mean, why not keep going? I can. Um, allow you to update uh, here. So if we go to, let's do a new form. 
And this one is going to be connected to list one. We're going to remove the attachments. I will pull this or I will make title the full width and make choices the full width. So now <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll say input a new button. This button will say add more choices. And pretty much all it's going to do is say new form form three. So this is my form three. So you can see it's highlighting green. It's highlighting green. Add more choices. We have a new form. Um, we can add an icon. Let's add an icon. Make it a check mark just to do things different. And we can say this is submit form three. Uh, form three. All right. So our our new one will be. Uh, let's do. Um, Um, let's say, I don't know, oceans. We have Atlantic, Pacific, Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. So we submit it. It writes in here. We can select now. It's populated our drop down. Um, these are my oceans. We submit. We go back to SharePoint, refresh. You can now see that we have populated this list. We can go to list one and see that we now have oceans on there. All right, so now let's do it with the context variable. So you can do that in the navigate function. So if we check out navigate and we highlight it, you'll see that it says target transition. So transition is fade. And then if you add another comma, it's going to say context. So what we can do is we can say variable con choices. So this is a context variable. And this is going to be this item dot choices. So we're just passing a variable a different way. So variable con choices, right? So we're passing this variable when we select. And then here where we had variable choices, we can change it to variable con choices. And that's going to do the same thing. So we're just passing the variable in a different way. So it's, so it's just being passed from one screen to another. So that, that's two different ways that you can do a variable. You could do set. So set is going to be globally across your entire Power App. That variable is, is, is there. That's the two different ways you can do um, a variables. You know, you can choose how you'd, you'd like to do it. There are benefits of either one. But um, this was a question I had. Um, if you wanted to populate a dropdown based on another list. So you just uh, set up a nice little gallery here. Um, pass the variable either through set or through a context variable and navigate and you have yourself a uh, a nice new power app so thank you guys for watching if you have questions please feel free to ask right now i'm answering questions i'm going to try and do it all through the whole year ask a question subscribe i'm glad to answer thank you this is my sharepoint questions i'll see you next time